going to be discussing the supraspinatus and infraspinatus and their facet anatomy. And our landmark to find our supraspinatus is our bicipital groove. So we're going to palpate for that and start at the front and find our biceps through the groove. As I go posterior, I'll come on to our supraspinatus. Now, to bring that supraspinatus out and into our view from under the acromion, we're going to go into our modified crest position. So hand on hip, elbow in. And we'll locate our bicipital groove again. And there we are falling onto our supraspinatus. Now, to know I'm in a true short axis plane, I just want to scan through. And I want to make sure I'm not falling off the cartilage as I am here. Um, at the back and not at the front. So I'm just going to adjust my pro position so I'm in a true short axis. And the humeral head is uh, spherical. What we want to do is as we're scanning down towards the origin, uh, towards the insertion of the supraspinatus, I just want to roll my probe around so I can get a look all the way through there. So I can see that all the way through looking really nicely. Excellent. Then it's a simple just turn 90 degrees from that position and I'm into my long axis. And again, I want to find my bicep so I know where our anterior supraspinatus is. So I'm going to fall anteriorly until I come off the supraspinatus and there onto the bicep. So as I come back posterior, I know I'm on anterior supra. So you can see here the insertion of the supraspinatus is quite hypoechoic and this is our anisotropy. So I need to change my pro position move a little more laterally and angle in to show those fibres coming down onto their footprint. You can see that really nicely through here. So this is important that we change our position and look from more than one position. So this is the modified crass position. We also have our crass position where we get our patient's hand right wrapped around and into the small of the back. I find it can pull the biceps a little bit too far forward and I actually am losing that anterior supraspinatus. I don't find it as effective and it puts it a little bit more on tone. We want it a little off tone, a little relaxed. So that's that modified crass. Now, to assess our facets and to recognise our supraspinatus and infraspinatus footprints, we're going to use our facet anatomy. So I'm going to scan laterally and come down onto the insertion. And you can see this little bony prominence here in the middle. And that is separating our superior facet from our middle facet. So our supraspinatus from our infraspinatus. And, and this is a way of defining which ligament, uh, which tendon we're on. So we use that little bony prominence there. So it's just simply as scanning down our supraspinatus, find our bony prominence moving around. So supraspinatus and infraspinatus there. I can also appreciate this in our long axis. So as I, we can see this nice sloped footprint here of our supraspinatus, but as I come posterior, we'll see that start to flatten out. And this will be our infraspinatus. You can see that flattening of that footprint there. And we can see these striated tendon coming through. And that is our infraspinatus with our tendon coming off another view and I find this is an excellent way of assessing our infraspinatus and not trying to stretch our hand across. So this is an excellent way of assessing our infraspinatus insertion. So then we can go on our true long axis of that infraspinatus, we can get an excellent look through there. So that's how we assess those two tendons. Um, we're going to touch on bursa and our bursal injection. So I like to have the patient as relaxed as possible, but we also need to make it as easy for ourselves. So we'll have the elbow back a little bit. We'll have our short axis view, and we will go in from a posterior approach. And again, we won't be right at the edge of the, th um, edge of the transducer. We'll come back a couple of centimetres and come in a little flat and glide into that top of the bursa, and we want to see that fluid flowing away and we don't want to see it puddling up. So that's how we do our injections. Mm -hmm.